Hi, so in this video we're going to cover off changing the rear brake pads on a 2014 uh, Ford Cougar 2 litre diesel. A um, couple of the tools we're going to need. Torque driver, 19mm socket for the wheel nuts. Uh, I'm just going to use the standard Ford scissor jack. Um, the <coughs> jack point is just along the inside edge here just in front of the rear wheel um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the wheel off and we're going to get in here take the brake caliper off change the pads and reassemble uh, what we'll also need as part of this job is a brake wind back tool which is just there and an allen key and do the caliper. So let's make a start. I'll start by uh, jacking it up. Okay so first thing to be aware of I've used a 19 millimeter socket which is pretty standard for a wheel nut. Um, however Ford decided to make really crap wheel nuts um, and this is the state of this one here. Basically what's happened, let's zoom in a little bit, it's deformed as you can see there um, now if you can see just if I turn it at this angle here the hex shape actually sits underneath and actually what you see on the outside is actually a metallic cover um, So um, what, what I'll uh, probably end up doing is replacing it with something like that temporarily until I can get another wheel nut um, just to make it tidy. Um, <coughs> what I did do is because I was using this 19mm nut and I had a problem, literally the first nut, which is always good. Um, I brought out the, uh, the full tool which comes with the scissor jack because um, you can guarantee that that's exactly right um, so that's what I've decided to use just to sort of break them loose um, and then I'll, I'll zip them off um, so that's the wheel nuts uh, I've got to do the locking nut down here first um, before I take the wheel off but we'll get that done and we'll carry on uh, probably something just worth mentioning actually these scissor jacks are um, pretty good actually um, folds of finally decided that rather than having a rod coming off the base of the scissor jack for winding it um, they've just got the nut now you can put a pole in there um, which I've probably got somewhere in the car but uh, for this sort of job got old socket and ratchet makes the job a lot easier and you can just get the job done a lot quicker just winding it up right there's another quick point I want to make um, if anyone's new to doing this sort of job um, Make sure you get yourself some axle stands. Um, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but actually, an axle stand can quite literally save you from getting crushed. Um, so I've got some two-ton axle stands. Um, the car's still jacked up, by the way, so you can see it's off the ground there. Um, what I've done, I'll put one axle stand in. Uh, this is coming underneath. This is just off the suspension linkage for the wheel. Turn it that way. You see, there's the wheel. Here's the suspension arm, and if I zoom in a closer look, you can kind of get a better closer look as to uh, quite where it's sitting. Um, it's just just a safety precaution, really. You don't want it slipping off the jack. Um, this is a jack's not bad, but I wouldn't rely upon it. Um, so just make sure you put it on the make sure you put it on an axle stand um, just for a bit of safety. Um, I'll leave the jack on. This is just here as a uh, fail safe really. And then what we'll do, we'll get this wheel off and carry on. We have the wheel off. So brake disc looks in pretty reasonable condition. <coughs> come around here. Um, 
this is the outside pad and you can see just there just in here is what we're looking at there is not a lot of brake material left um, to be honest probably kind of expected a little bit more it's done about 25,000 this vehicle um, and this is on the rear so I would have expected the pads to last a little bit longer but it's a heavy vehicle um, quite often carrying a couple of kids and a bootload bootload of stuff so um, maybe shouldn't be too surprised that it's gone right <clears throat> so in order to get these off we need to remove this pin uh, or restraint wire and then coming around the back of the caliper <clears throat> top and bottom so first thing we can do is remove the plastic cap this is just a uh, weather cover this one there <clears throat> second one just down here <clears throat> yep so once those are done what we need to do uh, I'll, I'll take this wire off in a moment but what we need to do get your allen get your allen key I just want to fit that in and then we just need to crack that off which I shall do off camera because I'm trying to do it one handed um, and I don't want to twist anything up um, but again we can see the rear pad material in there is pretty low uh, but essentially <clears throat> this is a sliding pin it's an Allen, Allen key in here as we know so we just need to unwind this unwind this one that will then release it and um, we'll take this wire off as well and then this caliper will basically pull off so we'll do that now and uh, I'll chat to you in a second right so I've removed this retaining wire just want to get a uh, flathead screwdriver under there just lift it out then it will just pull away give it a wiggle doesn't need a lot of force this is a retaining wire um, do yourself a favour by the way uh, I know it's very simple get yourself a little pot just to put everything in keep it all together you don't lose it um, <coughs> Then having cracked that off, this is a 7mm Allen key, and as you can see there, as I undo it, it's just slowly but surely pulling this pin back. Except I'm wind, winding it the wrong way. Um, as you look at this, again, very simple, but you easily make the mistake you want to go. Uh, clockwise if you're looking at the wheel um, because obviously looking at it this way turning it that way will be going clockwise so you want to come on and -clock uh, clockwise to look at it to undo so, uh, okay that's the top one and then I'll come down here Repeat down here. So it's worth noting, by the way, if you uh, if you're again new to doing this sort of maintenance task on your vehicle um, I've done this now on several vehicles um, particularly Fords and they're pretty much absolutely identical um, some slight differences sometimes but we're, we're you know we're not talking a lot at all um, you can remove these pins and actually it's probably not a bad thing to remove them just clean up, clean up all this dirt here 
um, and then copper slip them. So I'll put that down there. We'll do that when we uh, reassemble it. And same with that one. It's just got quite a lot of crud. Um, you just copper slip it, it just stops it obviously seizing up. So when you do the job again, it's uh, a bit easier. All right. So, it's our caliper nice and loose. And then really, what we've got to do is we've just got to rock this and uh, it will release and come back. Um, might need to apply a little bit of force, but you shouldn't need a lot. Um, but essentially, this, this whole bracket needs to come that way. So I'll get on with doing that with two hands instead of one. And then we'll, uh, once that's done, we can actually replace the pads. Right, so I'm trying to get this caliper pulled back. Um, these are the original pads, so these would have been factory fitted. Uh, it's done 25,000 miles and it's three years old. So as you can possibly imagine, everything's quite tight on there. Um, so what I'm gonna do to loosen this, flathead screwdriver, just at the top here. Get that in there. Give it a little jimmy back. You'll see it's slowly coming backwards and then just alternate between the two, top and bottom. And just keep doing that. Don't put too much force into it. Um, because obviously you don't want to damage this top bracket. It'd probably, probably be quite hard work to anyway. It's quite tough metal, but um, I don't believe in uh, overly forcing things. If it doesn't want to go, generally there's a good reason for it. Um, but yeah, just jimmy it back. Slowly but surely. And uh, it will come loose, but it just takes a, a bit of time and effort. As you can see, it's kind of got a bit of corrosion under there. Um, what we'll do when we put new pads on, if we copper slip all of this, it will stop it seizing on. So again, second time round, if you keep vehicle that long, um, you shouldn't get that problem. Um, and yeah, obviously. Okay, as well as top and bottom, just try and go right and left, um, and, and we'll carry on like that until we get it off. Just yeah, yeah, take your time, don't rush it, don't be overly forceful. Um, just some gentle pressure, uh, and it, it will come apart. Okay, so I've got the caliper off. <clears throat> These are the original brake pads, um, which actually. I haven't got off the vehicle. Look, not as bad as I thought. There's more wear, there's more um, life left in them yet. Um, so actually, probably a little bit early to do this job, but we'll do it anyway. Um, so that's the uh, original pad, which you can see probably what, five mil pad left. And this is the uh, the new one, which is obviously substantially more. Um, but if we <clears throat> compare them, you can start to see that actually the original pads have got some life left in them. But as I've got it off, uh, you know, why not just do the job? So um, we'll get rid of those. Um, I've bought some PAG ID ones from uh, Euro Car Parts, um, mid, mid range really, um, I don't hammer this because it's a Cougar, uh, and they are original manufacturer equipment um, pad quality, so I'm going to use those. Right, so we need our brake wind back tool, now on here. We'll see, we have two little nodes, and they basically go in those two little holes. And what we're going to do, if I can find the other plate, you need to stick this in the caliper, and essentially put that plate in, and stick that in, 
and then we will wind the uh, we'll wind this brake piston back. So that's the next job. Again, I'll do it off camera because I need two hands to do the job. Um, but you need to wind it all the way back so we can fit the new pads in. For the purpose of uh, demonstration, your understanding. Um, got that now in position against the piston. Here's the plate. Here's the wind back tool. And then once it's done, I just want to turn that. Like so. And then I'll slowly wind it back. Um, and keep going until that piston is all the way back. Right. Piston is completely wound back. So out of the point we're going to reassemble <clears throat> um, it's a bit brake cleaner by the way and what I'll do is I'll clean these nuts up in a minute with a, with a rag get all that crap off um, <clears throat> and then reassembly so new pads there is a this is the back which has got the um, spring spring locators on there and basically that helps it just basically sit in this little channel um, move backwards and forwards in the right position. So that is going to be our back one. So I'll sit down there. And then this is going to be our front pad, which will obviously sit in. And you probably noticed this already because this is where you pulled it out. Sorry, don't know why the camera is not that. That just sits in there, we'll sit against that disc. Um, as I mentioned about taking these off, um, you'll notice there's quite a lot of corrosion. It was a bit of an effort to get it off, it comes off in the end, but um, to make the job easier, albeit that hopefully it'll be quite some time before you have to do it again. I'm going to copper slip these bits here, just, just where these uh, parts sit. And what we'll also do is we'll also copper slip the back of this as well, um, where the piston goes on, just make sure it doesn't seize onto the piston or anything stupid like that. Uh, and then we reassemble. So, <clears throat> let's say, got some brake cleaner on those, let's get all of those out. Worth, by the way, just copper slipping these when you when you're done. Um, just copper slip all around this edge, and again, it, it just stops everything seizing up. Right. Okay. So reassembling. Um, get yourself some copper grease. Um, I've just got a little tube. Doesn't need a lot. Um, when you're doing this, by the way, uh, be careful not to get anything on these brake pads because obviously. Get any oil or dirt or anything on these pads, um, it's going to affect the discs, reduce the braking efficiency. Um, so, whatever you're doing, try and keep them as clean as possible on clean surfaces. Don't put them down, particularly where there's oil. Um, right, so what we do, this is a rear pad. I'm just going to put some cup of grease on there, smear that around a little bit. Okay, so that's our uh, back pad. Back with us. <clears throat> right, what we do? Just want to put that on the back of the pad, back of the disc. Just put that into position. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Okay, there we go. So that's that pad in position there. Yeah, just uh, make sure the uh, the bottom bits down the bottom here just sit in the little guides um, and keep it flush to the disc. Um, stick the front one on, and then we can uh, grease that. Don't need a lot of this. This is 
literally a uh, kind of thinking ahead and making your life easier in the future. There we go. Right, oh, before we put this away, <coughs> I'm now clean these two up. Um, just copper slip them all around the top here because that's going to be the bit that gets exposed and possibly sees up. Anywhere where you get the crud building up, that's uh, kind of useful to grease it. So, um, do that. Again, don't need masses, but just put enough on there that it's... Uh, well, I'll put a bit more on in a second, but um, that needs to go in. So, right. <coughs> now we have these pads in position. <coughs> get my glove off. Don't want to get grease anywhere. And get the caliper, just lift it over the back, and slide that <clears throat> into position. Yep, okay, so that's where it should sit. Um, the spring sit against it, and uh, you'll notice the spring pushes back on it, but that, well, that will go forwards and then it will just hold everything tightly in position. So once that's in place, <clears throat> and get your pin. Slide that through the top. <clears throat> right, push that forwards a little bit. Just get it located. Locate that pin in, and there we go. And once that's in place, you can just finger tighten it very quickly. Don't do this all the way up. Um, just get it in position enough that uh, you're going to pop out again. <clears throat> okay. Once you've done that. a little push forwards and position itself and then in we go right <clears throat> then what we'll do tighten both of those up hand tight um, I'm going to skip ahead slightly I'm going to pour you tightening that <coughs> I'm going to get your retaining clip, or wire, should I say. Um, it's fairly obvious as to where all this goes. Stick one end in. Yep. So this bit just goes against that lever. Bottom bit, obviously, the same. And try and locate the wire into the hole first. Yep. <clears throat> Give it a good push back. <clears throat> yep. And then what I tend to do is just use a rubber mallet. Just very gently put the wire in. Like so. And that's it. Brake pads are changed. Oh. One last thing. I'll come, I'll come back and do these. I'm just demonstrating this for you, obviously. 
um, take the weather cap, put that back on there, one on the top, one at the bottom. Put the wheel back on, lower the vehicle down. Job done. Enjoy. Bye. Just one final part to this video now to get the brakes ready for use again on the roads. Um, we need to set the brakes up. Uh, so do that. Get a handbrake. Pull up and down several times. Um, you'll notice it will feel quite loose to start with. It will slowly tighten up. Um, and also, you just start the vehicle. Um, what I tend to do as well, just pump the brake pedal half a dozen times um, and then the handbrake again and then what the, what this is doing is basically where we've wound the brake caliper uh, oh sorry the brake piston all the way back this is now resetting it to its sort of new position with the new pads in um, ready for use make sure you do this before you drive the, drive off in the car um, that's it right